They spray our skies Interact with, with the magnetic toxic chemicals. Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to Debunk the Funk. What shape is the Earth? I'm willing to guess that when I ask that question, probably words that come to your mind are round or sphere. It's well established fact, right? Well, there are some people, admittedly very few in number, who believe quite the opposite and cling to the ancient belief that the Earth is flat. Some people will call them flat earthers, and I don't know if they find that derogatory or not. I like to stick with the term flat earth enthusiast. Now, if you're anything like me, upon first hearing about this, probably a lot of questions have popped into your head. Like, well, what about photos from space that show the round Earth? What exactly do they think is happening when the sun is setting? How, in fact, can you have two places on the same Earth be night and day at the same time? Now, most flat Earth enthusiasts, they'll tell you that they have answers to those questions. How thorough and satisfying you find those answers to be is different from person to person. I have no problem letting you know they don't quite meet my standards. So, what's the idea? What is the Flat Earth model? Well, to be honest, that's not really an easy question to answer because there doesn't seem to be one. Meaning, there doesn't seem to be just one. I've spent some time looking into Flat Earth ideas and even talking to some Flat Earth enthusiasts online. I was trying to get to the heart, to the core of what is their idea? What are their strongest arguments? And what I've found is that while they have many different pictures and YouTube videos, simulations, animations, and a truckload of memes, there isn't one authority on what the Flat Earth idea is. And as I delved deeper, I also found that a lot of Flat Earth enthusiasts seem to have splintered off into a bunch of different Flat Earth groups. That many of them disagree with each other on all sorts of very important details. But here's my best take on three things that almost every Flat Earth enthusiast seems to agree with. Number one. The Earth is flat and essentially coin-shaped. Everything that we normally think of as the surface of our globe is also on just one half the top side of their coin-shaped Earth. Our southern hemisphere is the outer half of their coin and the northern hemisphere is the interior half of their coin. The North Pole being directly in the center. Number two. Their sun is much closer to the Earth than our understood 93 million miles. In fact, the distance from the surface of their coin-shaped Earth to the sun is much less than the diameter of their coin. And their sun travels around in a circle above the surface of their Earth and somehow acts like a spotlight where wherever it's shining is day and anywhere it's not shining is night. Number three. NASA, and in fact every single space-faring organization, space-faring nation, all of that stuff is fake. That any photos you see of space, especially ones that include the globe-shaped Earth, are all forgeries made with Photoshop or other such tools. We've never been to space, that we never landed on the moon, all of it is lies. They also disbelieve that satellites are launched and orbit the Earth. And if you follow the logic, that also means that they believe every single developed nation that launches satellites or has a space program is in on the lie. These are nations that sometimes don't agree on anything with each other, but yet all have bought into keeping the flat earth secret. It's a lot to take in, right? Bet you got more questions than before I started that list. Well, that's also what flat earth as an idea really relies upon, you having questions. When you hear about the idea and you start to ask questions, boy do they have a meme and a 20 minute YouTube video for you. They use a whole lot of fudgery and trickery. Whether they're doing it consciously or they're just passing along ideas that they too bought into and believe, a lot of it's trash. And if you aren't equipped with critical thinking skills and some basic scientific knowledge, some of their ideas can even start to look plausible. But before we go further, let me tell you two things that I actually agree with when it comes to flat earth philosophy. The first is that 
A lot of flat earth enthusiasts will tell you that you only believe that the earth is a globe because that's what you've been told to believe. That at some point in school, people just showed you a round globe and showed you some pictures and they felt that that was enough to convince you. And it probably was at the time. I don't know that a lot of people can say that they actually had a science teacher or somebody else really sit them down and show them very irrefutable evidence that the earth is a sphere. And maybe then you never did question it. The second part of their philosophy that I agree with and respect, they talk a lot about how important it is that our conclusions are based upon empirical evidence. That if and when we can use actual evidence that we can collect ourselves, that's what we should base our conclusions on. Not just some authority that is telling us and we take their word for it. I agree, that's how science should be done. I just don't know that I agree that flat earth enthusiasts are really doing that correctly. And you know what? As a science teacher, I'm willing to admit, maybe we have gotten a little relaxed in showing the hardcore evidence that's out there about what shape the earth is. In fact, I think these days, maybe a lot of us just figure, hey, since the ancient Greeks figured this out and we've been to space and can show you videos of the moon landing, that by second or third grade, you're probably already on board. Well, let's see if Debunk the Funk can help us out here. But before we get into it, let me make something abundantly clear. I am not making this video to try to convince flat earth enthusiasts to give up the ghost. They are welcome to look at whatever they consider to be evidence and come to their own conclusions. We all are. So why am I making this video then? Well, and I don't think the flat earth enthusiasts are going to like hearing this, for the first episode of Debunk the Funk, I figured why not start off with one of the easiest things to debunk. Now while we do this, I'm going to play by their rules. They think that space images are fake and photoshopped and frauds? Okay, I won't use any. I'm going to do exactly what they say and what they request we all do. I'm going to take the ideas and I'm going to test them out. And I'm going to use readily available empirical evidence right here on the surface of the Earth. Alright, so what's the claim? Well as I said, the flat earth idea isn't one idea that's authoritative and that they all follow. A lot of flat earth ideas go into a bunch of little different details about what the stars are, how they move in the night sky, what the sun's made out of, what the moon's made out of. And so there isn't just one claim that I can make that, if disproven, would just debunk all of the flat earth ideas. And that'd be a lot to try to tackle in one video. But what I can do is take one idea that the majority of flat earth ideas use and involve and test out that idea. So let's investigate this idea. What exactly is happening when the sun sets? Well, with modern day global understanding of the setting sun, the idea is that the earth is rotating. And the viewer on the surface of the earth, as the earth rotates, eventually the viewer gets to a point where their line of sight to the sun is being blocked, being obstructed by the earth itself. The curvature or bulge of the earth. Okay, so what is the flat earth explanation for what we observe when we see the setting sun? Well, every version of the flat earth idea that I've encountered has this to say. That the earth is stationary, doesn't move or rotate. And their sun, which is again, much closer to the surface of the earth than we understand it to be, is actually moving away from the viewer. As the sun moves away further and further and further and recedes, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Its visual apparent size decreases. Eventually, according to their idea, it moves so far away that it becomes too small to visually see. Okay, so from that idea, that's where we're going to get our claim that we're going to investigate today. Here's our claim. When the sun sets, it's moving so far away from the viewer that it becomes too small to be seen. You know what? Let's model both of these ideas. Get a better understanding for what we're talking about. I found some train tracks that have a nice curved overpass. In fact, you can see vehicles being obscured by the bulge due to the curve from the bottom up. So I went out with a makeshift sun that I made and went far enough away so we could see my sun start to set as I walked backwards. Now every model has limitations compared to the real thing. Most notable in this one is that in the globe model, the viewer would rotate away rather than the sun moving. Sorry, I can't make this bridge rotate though. But this demonstration is only to show how a visibly circular object looks as it becomes obscured by a bulge due to curvature. 
So here as I walk backwards, you can see my sun start to set. Notice halfway through, we no longer see the bottom half of my sun, but the top half, which is an apparent half circle, is visible. And here are some intermediate shots of my globe modeled setting sun. We'll save those for later. So how does this look with a flat earth concept? Well next I went down to the train tracks. Why there? Well, flat earth enthusiasts attempt to describe their setting sun using what they call the law of perspective. And they love showing train tracks when they do it, so I thought it was fitting. What's this law of perspective, you ask? Well, in art class, it's just some general rules for how to draw scenes that approximate what we see. But beyond that, it's not a real thing. In science, there is no law of perspective. Flat Earth enthusiasts will use the term often as if just saying it alone answers a question. But I couldn't even find this pretend law clearly stated on any Flat Earth website. The general idea, though, is that as their sun moves away, it gets smaller, like you see here, and eventually disappears into a vanishing point. They say that when you see a sunset, you are seeing the sun go into its vanishing point because of the law of perspective. But keep in mind, these are just art class terms. There's not an iota of actual science in them. Now, as I move away, I see the sun getting smaller, but I don't see any of it becoming obscured, especially the bottom half. Even this far away, and I know this is tough to make out, I can still see my legs, which of course are below the edge of my poster board sun I made. And I know this isn't perfect, but here's five of my distances to show this law of perspective, which Flat Earth feels is a satisfactory explanation for a sunset, and also that it fits the real evidence of what we see when we see the sun setting. Okay, now that we see what these two ideas are like, we can also see that they make some predictions that are very different from each other. If the globe model is correct, then as we see the sunset, according to this idea, we should see the lower half, the bottom half of the sun, become obscured first. At some point during the sunset, we should see only the top half of the sun. We wouldn't necessarily see any apparent change in its size either. While certainly a rotating Earth is moving the viewer further away from the setting sun, that distance is insignificant compared to the 93 million miles away the sun is. The flat earth idea, though, which tries to involve a vanishing point and this law of perspective, the sun is moving away and should get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But at no point in time, as long as there's no tree or building or mountain in the way, should anything be obstructing our view of the sun. It should just get to be a smaller and smaller dot of light until it winks out. Well, last year, I made the drive to the west side of our state, Michigan, to put these two ideas to the test. Come on, let's go watch some very empirical evidence. A sunset. Oh yeah, and a year ago, my hair was a lot different. Brace yourself. So here we are, St. Joseph, Michigan, and it's currently... 8.23 p.m. Sunset is supposed to occur at 9.11 p.m. We chose St. Joseph because we live in a very fortunate state, Michigan, and on Lake Michigan, the sun's gonna set in the west. You can go ahead and see the horizon of Lake Michigan there on the western side of this beautiful state. So with this awesome opportunity, we get to see the sunset without anything on the horizon to block its view. 8.45 p.m. We're about two sun widths away from it starting to touch Lake Michigan. So let's get set up and get ready to do it. It's just starting to touch now. Looks like we're about halfway into it. I'm definitely only seeing the upper half of the sun. Getting close. I'd give it maybe less than a minute.
Very close. Yeah. Almost. Getting close. And starting here, I slowed it down to half speed, just so we could enjoy the sunset together. Watch that epic bird fly by. And in just a few seconds, the sun had set. All right, so what did we see? Well, first, let me show you a flat earth meme. Here's one that gets trotted out often anytime that they're trying to explain how the sun sets. It says, if any object moves into the distance, it appears to rise up if on the ground or lower down if it is in the sky. Okay, I'm with you on that, but pay attention to the next part. Here comes the sleight of hand. The Earth's surface is never perfectly smooth. It will always create a false closer horizon than the vanishing point. So anything above the Earth's surface will appear to disappear behind it from the bottom up as it travels away. Hold up there. Nice try. Go back to that middle sentence. The Earth's surface is never perfectly smooth. It will always create a false closer horizon than the vanishing point. The picture is showing you that if something like mountains or buildings or a tree are in the way of you and the distant horizon, that of course as the sun sets, you're going to see the bottom half be obscured first because that mountain or building or tree line is in the way. That since they are higher up in the surface of the earth, they will always obscure your view of the sun as it sets. And that because of these things, you'll never get to actually see it reach its vanishing point. That's why we went to Lake Michigan. There is nothing on that lake to obscure your view. Sorry, there's no false horizon idea to try to employ here. Now take a look and you tell me. Looking at the empirical evidence as the sun was setting, which of the two ideas is being supported here? Do we have a sun here that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes into a vanishing point? Or do we have a sun where the bottom half has been obscured by something and the top half is still visible and the same apparent size. Take a look here just before the sun sets and compare it to while the sun is setting. This is the same focal length. Nothing has been zoomed in or zoomed out. Notice the diameter of the sun is exactly the same. Wouldn't it be that if the sun was getting smaller and smaller going into a vanishing point that there would be a difference in its diameter between when we can see all of it and when we can somehow only see half. And in fact, if the sun really was getting smaller and smaller, going into a vanishing point, nothing about that flat earth idea says that you would have half of it vanish first. But hey, feel free to come to your own conclusion. Now, did I just prove that the earth is a spinning globe? No. If you understand how science works, you know that I didn't do that at all. But what we have done here is we have disproven a claim. So let's go back and consider the original claim. When the sun sets, it's moving so far away from the viewer that eventually it can no longer be seen. If that claim were true, the sun would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it would get to a point where we suddenly would not be able to see all of it at the same instant. Instead, we were able to see the top half of the sun perfectly fine while the bottom half of the sun was unable to be seen. This claim just does not fit the evidence. I'm calling it debunked. Now, does disproving the flat earth sunsets disprove the entire idea of flat earth? Well, let me remind you, there isn't one authoritative idea of the flat earth. But I will say this, if the sun doesn't disappear into a vanishing point, which I think we've seen it doesn't, then every flat earth idea I've ever encountered has a major gaping hole in it. I want to thank you for checking this video out, and that thumbs up like is always appreciated. And if you wish to subscribe to this channel, more Debunk the Funk is on its way. And while this series isn't only going to explore Flat Earth, at the same time, we're not done with it yet. I'm Rich Lund, and I'm here to remind you, the world needs critical thinkers. Make sure you're one of them. See you next time.